make welcome our host, Godman Akinlabi. Somebody excited by those testimonies. But you know what? You guys, you should allow us to hear the testimony. And I know the one that touched you the most. <laughs> that, that lady. <laughs> I, I know that was the one that touched most people the most. But you know one thing, I'm happy that you are excited about it. Because God is going to multiply that testimony. I said God is going to multiply that testimony. I'm saying it again, God is going to multiply that testimony. Angels will bring people your way. Who will connect with you and usher you into the fullness of your marital destiny in the precious name of Jesus. Will you lift your two hands to Jesus all over this place, everyone online at every of the experience centers and glorify the God who gave us all those testimonies. Not unto us, not unto us, but unto you be glory, honor and adoration because you have done all things well and for this we are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. Can we return all the glory to God today? He's a good God. Merciful God. Beautiful King. We worship you, our Father. We thank you for what you do. And we thank you for who you are. And we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. For who you are. and keeping God we honor you for all that you do in this house we return all the glory to you today we honor you we honor you and we thank you for what you are here to do even in the course of this conference have your way father we give you permission Holy Spirit to move in this place to heal to set free and to deliver to cause the heavens to open over somebody's life to do the things that only you can do. Father, do it that your name may be glorified. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we bless your holy name. In the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, I want you to do a little better. Celebrate Jesus. And I also wanted to have me make welcome Apostle Joshua Selma. Just make him welcome. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, we can do better than that. Celebrate God's grace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please, you may have your seat. You're welcome, Apostle. God bless you. Praise God. I said praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you put your hands together and welcome everyone joining us online, everyone at all the experience centers from Shagotado, Greater Lekki, to Maryland, Ikeja, to Ikoi, to Ikorodu, to Abuja, Everyone from London, England, from Toronto, all of our campuses, come, come on, come on. Let's appreciate everyone who up online right now, joining us. Praise God. I want to encourage you to take distractions away from you and get ready to be blessed by the teaching and preaching of God's word tonight. I want you to know that the God who gave us a word, that this is a season of unusual elevation, uh, you're going to be skyborne you're going to experience the unusual egg like never before. So, so you get ready because God is ready for you. And I know he's set to do something new in your life. In Jesus' precious name. If you're on any of our platforms, on YouTube or MixLR or on Instagram, whatever platform, Facebook, I want you to go there and let us know where you're joining us from. Uh, apart from people at the Experience Centers, if you're just joining us online, let us know where you're joining us from and just drop a word of expectation. Just drop a word of expectation as you, have, as you write in his presence. God will do unto you in the precious name of Jesus. All right. I want to bring us a short word of uh, the appetizer. All right. For tonight. And, you know, that testimony, and I don't mean to undermine all the other testimonies, by the way. Because there are powerful testimonies of healing, of restoration, but you guys love the one that has to do with relationship. <laughs> yes. Because you didn't even allow us to hear it. <laughs> and as if you know that this exhortation I'm bringing tonight is something wrapped around that. So the Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So I'm fully convinced that angels are ascending and descending in this place. And they're going ahead of you to work some things out about your God-ordained connections. Oh, can I get a better amen? Unusual edge, divine connections. That's what I've titled this. Unusual edge, divine connections. I want to read from Psalm 68 and verse number 6. Popular scripture that, I've been, that most of us are familiar with. Psalm 68 and verse number 6. It says, God set the solitaries in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. I love the New Living Translation. It says, God places the lonely in families. The lonely in families. Can you hear me ask your neighbor, are you lonely? Uh, God is about to replace your loneliness with family. <laughs> in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, if, if the person says yes, just, just look straight. Don't, don't, don't worry. It's between them and God. Don't bother yourself about whatever they said. But New Living Translation says, God places the lonely in families. He set the prisoners free and gives them joy. But he who makes the rebellious life but he who makes the rebellious live in a son, but he makes, sorry, he makes the rebellious live in a son's court land. 
Who is the rebellious in this context? Because the psalmist here postured God as the God of divine arrangement, as the God of divine connections, as the God who is interested in setting us up into all kinds of partnerships and relationships. And I'm not merely talking about marital relationships tonight. Do I know that some people here, that's the only thing they want to hear? Yeah. But <laughs> be coming down. Yes, be coming down. <laughs> See, the, the, the grace that is available here is more than enough. So just be calming down. Be calming down. All right. I know that some people, that's what you want to hear. But some people are here tonight. Angels are arranging business partnerships that will launch your business to a multinational. But I've come to challenge us tonight in this first charge that we must trust God to use relationships to give us the unusual edge. In fact, the truth is that one of the unusual edge that a covenant person must enjoy is unusual relationships. Yeah. Unusual edge in relationships. I stand in front of you tonight under God to say as a testimony to Jehovah, I have enjoyed unusual edge in relationships. I've enjoyed unusual edge in relationships. And that's why when God placed this in my heart, you know, my heart was bubbling. I really want to share it. One of the areas that have been so helped in my life is the area of divine connection in relationships. I'm not sure of any city in the world that I've entered before and there's nobody to attend to me. I'm not sure. My wife is here. We've been married 20 years uh, one of the, <laughs> the grace that she has enjoyed by being married to me. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not saying it with pride. I've enjoyed immense blessings being married to her. But this one, even she, she knows. <laughs> she agreed completely that in this area, I mean, I, 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 I'm telling you about us planning to travel to a particular city and Everything that has to do with what we're going to do there has been settled. I'm already saying, so what's going to happen? Oh, don't worry. The person that will pick us at the airport is settled. Where we're going, everything is settled. Don't worry yourself. Just prepare to enjoy. Yeah? Just prepare to be okay. Now, I'm describing it in little things because those are yet little things. But in other weightier matters of destiny, I've been blessed with God just going ahead to make connections, to just work things out. I've been in situations where people will say, uh, if only you, you can talk to that person, uh, we will let this go for you. If only you, you know, you know this, I mean. <sighs> okay, my wife and I found ourselves in a situation earlier this year where we were in a particular city and somehow we couldn't find any of our IDs again. No passport, nothing. Everything gone. Like this, like the snap of a finger. And we were supposed to move, I mean, this was in the US, move through one or two more cities and then go to Canada and preach in Canada not even in one city, like two cities in Canada, and then still come back to Lagos. <laughs> and I just finished preaching in two churches in the city of San Francisco, Sunday morning. And we we're catching the flight Sunday evening, but lo and behold, there was no way to catch the flight. Yeah. Not even a single ID, not even a driver's license. <laughs> but... And I'm telling you this under God. I'm saying this as a testimony for somebody here to know that there's no situation that you can be in your life that God has not prepared people ahead of you to sort you out. 
We had critical things to do in Canada. I was to preach <laughs> in a church on Sunday morning. The deputy continental overseer of RCCG was expecting me to preach in his church on Sunday morning. I mean, and, and it's absurd to say that, you know, <laughs> we're stranded. I, and you know in this church, I've declared it too much. The angels are overworking on it. I can never be stranded. And you cannot be stranded. It means that in every situation, God will have to work with his angels to arrange, to cut all the long story short. There was nothing that we had planned to do that we did not do. There was no city that we was on that itinerary. And this itinerary started from Lagos to Cape Town, from Cape Town to San Francisco, you know, and all that. And we still had, I think, four more cities. There was no city that we did not enter, and we didn't have any ID. Now, especially for people watching online, some people would think I'm lying. It's okay. You don't have to believe it. No, that's the truth. You don't have to believe it. It happened to me and my wife, not only me. So both of us are lying, right? <laughs> yes, I mean, so it looks like modern day Ananias and Sapphira. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, I've never shared this. I've, maybe I've only talked about it once before. I can't remember where I was talking, where I mentioned this. Yeah. I've, I've only spoken about this public. This is the first time I'm speaking about this publicly. But I'm only saying it to awaken somebody to what I'm talking about this evening. I have been in situations, and this is one of them, where, I mean, I shared one, was it on Sunday or when? Where I was talking about when I was in university in Akure, in front of the University of Technology Akure, I, a pastor invited me. I was working with that pastor at that time. This was, I think, even before I started a, a ministry on campus, a fellowship on campus, to join in to another city. I think I do a kit or so on a mission evangelism stuff. So I left campus with my last cobble and I went to town. And by the time I got there, they had left. There was no money to go back to campus. And I was just pacing, wondering what would happen. Because this would take, Pastor T knows uh, the, the, the place, you know, <laughs> that <laughs> very far, or by Leo, whatever they call the, that area. To walk from there back to campus. And a man walked past me and looked at me and said, I know your dad. And he brought money out and gave me money. I did not ask him, Apostle, whether it's my heavenly father or my earthly father. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. What I need. <laughs> I collected the money, put it in my pocket. I said, thank you, sir. Before I knew it, the man was gone. I entered a taxi. I went back to school. You can't prove to me that God does not exist. If anybody tells you that God does not exist, they lack encounters. <laughs> Go and ask Saul who became Paul whether God exists or not. In Acts chapter 9, when he was on the way to Damascus, when he was knocked off that horse, <laughs> you know the next thing, he, the question he asked? <laughs> who are you, Lord? He knew it must be Lord. Yeah. So he didn't beat around the bush. He was, who are you, Lord? And God answered and said, I am Jesus who you persecute. And you cannot kick against the gods. Yeah. Glory be to Jesus. So, somebody, I'm sharing this for you to release your faith tonight because God is reconfiguring relationships around you. God often answers prayers of mankind by sending men. He specializes in sending men. He sends men when he wants to answer our prayers. They prayed in Egypt. God sent Moses. God sent Moses, and it was a game changer. Moses was, he didn't look like a kid. He didn't have what it would take. You know, you're going to fight a superpower, and all you have in your hand is a rod. Yeah. So Moses didn't look like it. 
But God sent him, and it was a game changer. A big question, like I was asking you a few questions yesterday, and I hope you reckon with those questions yesterday and you're still thinking about them. But big question for tonight is who has God sent to you? And who has God sent you to? Or is this, who is he sending you to? You see, in this season, if there's one question, you know I got us to pray and ask God questions yesterday. If there's one question that you should be sure of, the answer should be clear. It is who has God sent to me? Who is in your corner that's supposed to be there? And who is in your corner that's not supposed to be there? And who is God sending you to? Because sometimes, just based on who God is sending you to, is a game changer for you also. There are some people God will send you to for you to be a blessing to them, and that's how you will be skyborn. And there are some people that God will send to you as well, and you have to hook yourself to their wings, and they're going to carry you higher. Glory be to Jesus. Proverbs 27 and verse 7 it says, Iron sharpens iron. So a man, a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. A man, a man. It's a man that will sharpen the countenance of his friend. That's why you need to recognize who is the sharpener that God is sending to you. It's a man that will sharpen the countenance of his friend. God uses man. In Genesis 30 and verse 27, Laban was unequivocal about the fact that the coming of Jacob was a, brought a lifting into his life. Laban, uh, the Bible says Laban said to him, please stay. If I found favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience. And the experience he was talking about there was more of divination because he was an idol worshiper. <laughs> he knew after he saw what was happening, what Jacob carried, he knew that there's something about this, this guy. There's something in his life. There's something. There's some, said, I've learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. There's somebody carrying the blessing that you must partake of. May God open your eyes Amen. to know who to hook up with. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I said, in the name of Jesus. So God wants to connect you with the right people. And I want to quickly, you know, in the remaining time that I have, just quickly give you a heads up on the the kind of relationships that you must open up to and start to pray about from Accelerate 2023. Just open up to and be specific in your prayers about them. Because some relationships carry prophetic grace. Some relationships are doors to destiny. Some relationships are divinely positioned to excite dreams, visions, and godly desires in your heart. Some relationships bring bad desires, ambitions, and evil desires. Yeah. While some relationships just excite divine desires in your heart. They excite your dreams and your vision. One of such is that you need to trust God for right bosses and leaders. Right bosses and leaders. Right bosses. If you are just starting your career, for instance, you need to trust God along your career path, like Pastor Yemi taught us this morning. Send your angels to arrange right bosses, you know, yeah. To, I mean, see, you have a pastor today that you can call your pastor and you love and all that and with all that God is doing through the ministry of the Elevation Church across the world because I started out in ministry with the right leader. Yeah. With the right leader. And I'll say that forever and ever. I am blessed. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't pay God anything. It just arranged my life. You know my story. Just a young Muslim boy who just got saved and got the right pastor and was a game changer. Maybe if I got the wrong pastor, I wouldn't be here today. May God order your steps. 
For anyone starting something new, may God connect you with the right people. Amen. Who will give you fast track experiences. Amen. You know, in Isaiah chapter 9, uh, I think, uh, can you put verse 15 of Isaiah chapter 9? Quickly, quickly. Multimedia, verse, verse 15 of Isaiah chapter 9. Quickly. It says, okay, go, go to verse 16. Verse 16, yeah. It says, for the leaders of these people cause them to hear. And those who are led by them are destroyed. Now, if you think that's a big deal, look at verse 17. It says, therefore, the Lord will have no joy in their young men. I have no mercy on their fatherless and widows. Normally, if there's any candidate of divine mercy, it's fatherless and widow. But leadership will change the equation. Bad leadership. He said, the leaders of this people cause them to hear, and those who are led by them are destroyed. He said, therefore, just because of the leader over them, though they qualify for mercy, but because of that cat, that leadership, he said, I will have no, the Lord will have no joy in their young men, nor have mercy. Hardly will you find in the scripture where they will say the Lord will not have mercy on the fatherless and widow. Even we are supposed to be merciful to widows, according to biblical injunction. There are certain things that wrong leadership can rob you of. So you, you need to fix your face like a flint. At work, in business, pray for the right leadership. Pray for the right leadership. Pray for the right leadership. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. Pray for the right leadership. Amen. Right bosses, right leaders. Go and ask David if he had an option. He would never have wanted to be under Saul. Life would have been easier than that. Have you read the story of Saul and David before? When your leader, the king, is throwing javelin at you, at close range, to just shut the life down, the guy was so insecure. May God deliver you from such leaders. At work, God will deliver you from such leaders. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Right pastors, mentors, and shepherds, still in the same line. Right pastors, right mentors, right shepherds. I've been blessed with mentors, not of mentors. When I sit to counsel people, I see people who didn't do anything wrong in life. They were not just fortunate enough to have the right mentor. They got a tormentor. Yeah. And life just becomes very hard just because of that. If you are such a person tonight, whether you are here in the room or you are online, I declare over you an end has come to that experience. Yeah. My God is bringing a shift into your life. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. He says, and I will give you shepherd according to my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. I'll give you shepherd after my own heart who will give you knowledge and understanding. You remember the popular Ephesians 4 uh, 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 and verse 8, uh, uh, 8, 11 and 12. It says, therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gift unto men. And he said, he gave and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, for the keeping of the saints, for the work of ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Thank God today that God is raising great gifts in the body of Christ. He gave some apostles. We have an apostle here tonight. <laughs> Glory to God. He gave some prophet. He gave some pastor. You have a pastor here tonight. <laughs> there are diversities of gifts in this room. But you need to know, he gave. He must have given some for you. And you need to lay hold on your own. We are blessed as a nation to have diversities of gift, Strong voices that God is using. How will it translate in your own life? Yeah. 
I would, if, if, I mean, if there's something you should be proud of as a Nigerian, you may not have many, but if there's one you should be proud of, is that in this nation, God has raised and is raising great gift. It means that those gifts must find connection with your own life. Am I saying the truth? So you, you cannot be in a place where light is shining and you are still behaving as if relationships and connections are not important. That's why, you know, I pity Christians who don't have strong spiritual heritage. Yeah, God planned the solitaries in families. You know, like we say at the Elevation Church, this is not just a church you attend, it's a family you belong. So when you come here, you have to choose. Because... We're family. We want you to belong. Yeah. And many people today have what we call fear of belonging. And it's not, be, it's not your fault. It's a case of twice beat, like once beaten, twice shy. But you need to trust God to be healed of such things so that you won't be robbed of your God-ordained destiny. Because there's something that you need to connect with and grow. Glory be to Jesus. Time will not permit me tonight, but you read the story of Elijah and Elisha. I was asking my wife a while ago, why is it that uh, Elijah was able to raise Elisha, but Elisha carried his grace to the, to the grave? Yeah. And you know, the answer she gave me was that it's a mutual thing. In the case of Elijah, Elijah went on God's instruction to look for Elijah. Caught him where he was doing his work. Plowing him with 12 yokes of, of, of oxen. And brought him. And, you know, that one was still giving an excuse. He said, no. It's either you are in or out. So he brought one of the animals, slaughter, and just parted with that and followed him. And his record was that here is Elijah, the man who poured water on the hands of Elijah. So he sat faithfully. But the man did something to draw him in. But his own reciprocation is that he sat faithfully and honorably. Please honor God ordained relationships in your life. Don't treat it anyhow. From spouse to boss to pastor to parents. See, when we're talking about skyborn, unusual edge, your unusual edge. A major part of it is those relationships. Yeah, those relationships. You have an unusual edge in certain God-ordained relationships that God has packaged into your life. The guys that were sent to Elisha or that found themselves with Elisha. You see, in the days of Elisha, they even told him, they said, don't you know that you're your pastor or your prophet will be taken away from you today. The sons of the prophet, they were just misbehaving. He said, don't worry. I'll keep following him. And I'll keep honoring him. And Elijah told him, if you see me when, when I'm taken off, then you'll get this thing. He got what he wanted. But Gehazi that was supposed to get his own was busy misbehaving like a coconut head. Looking for what is not missing. Yeah. Everything around Gehazi is about money. If there's no financial reward, yeah. Ah, my master allowed this, <laughs> this Syrian to go like that. No, it's not going to happen. We must profit for, from this expedition, uh, you know, expedition. So he went after the man. And instead of collecting riches, he collected leprosy. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Yeah. I'll say better amen, somebody. Yeah. Right friends and partners. For somebody here, like David, may God send a Jonathan into your life. Yeah. A Jonathan that will protect you in time of danger. God used David's friendship with Jonathan to preserve his life. Pay attention to your friendships. The Bible says in 1 Samuel Chapter 18, when you read from verse 1 now, when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was neat to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul took him that day 
and will not let him go home to his father's house anymore. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan took off the rope that was on him and gave it to David with his hammer, even to his sword and his bow and his belt. See, I mean, today is not, the story today is not how everything ended, but how it started with them. And the fact that they were sensitive. Because at critical times, Saul would have killed David, if not for Jonathan. You know that. May God send protectors into your life. May he open your eyes to see the kind of friendship you should be keeping right now. In the name of Jesus. Quickly, write sponsors, promoters, helpers, and advocates. All kinds of expressions. The, the, the Bible is replete with all kinds of divine arrangements that God put in place. Is it Paul and Timothy we should talk about? Or Elijah and Elisha that I spoke about? Or Moses and Pharaoh's daughter? Divine orchestrations all over the place. Is it Paul and Ananias? Or Saul and Ananias? After Saul lost his sight and all that, and God said, Send an ass to him. Because God sometimes will send amplifiers, interpreters, and publishers into your life. People who amplify your vision, who will interpret your vision, who will help you publish your vision. That's what you see in Moses and Aaron. Or you see Pharaoh's butler. And the critical role he played in the life of Joseph. I'm just running through a lot. And I'm doing this to steer the water in your heart to go and study. I've mentioned too many characters. If you're a serious Bible student here, you should write these things down and say, I want to know these relationships that pastor is mentioning. Use it for your Bible study. Something will wake up inside you. The next time you see a covenant relationship, you will not miss it. Well, I want to get your amen. Yeah. Yeah, you won't miss it. You, you will know that this is a covenant relationship. Yeah. Let me just add this too and I'll, I'll, I'll wrap this up. When in the story of uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, a woman, another woman called Elizabeth, played a very critical role. It's about deep calling on to deep. You know, there's something you are carrying. And there are some people you need to be in their presence for what you are carrying to leap in your womb. There has been many stillbirths, abortion, miscarriage of destiny because all the people that are, you know, just roaming around you are not carrying what you are carrying. So deep cannot call on to deep. The Bible says there that when Mary went to visit Elizabeth in Luke chapter 1 and verse 39. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. The, 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 she had not done medic, uh, pregnancy tests and showed her cousin to say, uh, I'm pregnant. Just meeting someone for the first time. May God bring you to people who will discern your destiny correctly. May God connect you with people who will know your journey in destiny and help you to navigate. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, my time is finished, but I need you to understand something. What happened here is not small. A young lady got pregnant out of the blues, still in confusion, not knowing what she was going to do with her life. And then God ordered her step to go and visit her cousin. And she got there without uttering a word. Just this woman being able to connect with her. She was also pregnant. And carrying John the Baptist. We are carrying history makers. We are on the same pathway. The Holy Ghost filled her up and she started to speak. Every word she spoke was a word that gave strength. 
to a, a young lady that was confused, that did not know the next thing to do, how to navigate the terrain. You understand? What, what, what's, the, what's this looking like? But every word, may God bring you before people who will speak into your life. Yeah. People who will speak the right words into your life. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been at critical junctures in my life. And God brought people who spoke words of destiny into my life. I believe you are here at Accelerate 2023 so that words of destiny can be spoken over your life. And those words will direct you into the right spaces, to the right people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, somebody say it better. Amen. Amen. Lastly tonight, in John chapter 2, at the marriage of Cana of Galilee, Jesus was invited. His disciples were invited. <laughs> and Mary's mother was there. They ran out of wine. As at the time, Jesus had not done any miracle. And even the mother who knew that this is a miracle worker, this guy is going to be taking shame away from people. And shame is apparent here. And he knew he had enough grace to do something about it. Such people are called, you know, uh, promoters. <laughs> people who give you a push. Sponsors. Helpers. Advocates. People who just... All Mary said is, they don't have wine. And he said, woman, what does my own have to do with this? My time has not yet come. There are many of us here right now. You're going about, my time has not yet come. Yeah. My time has not yet come. God is sending people into your life who will open a new season. All Mary said is, whatever he says to you, do it. I don't know whether there's a way in the Hebrew culture where a mother will look at a son and say, if you don't do anything here today, I'll deal with you. I don't know. I don't know what she did. But everything that Jesus said was as if he didn't say anything. The woman just looked and said, in her heart, she was saying, see, every word that God has spoken concerning you. Since I was carrying you in my womb, must start to come to pass now. So you better take this same away. So that <laughs> she didn't say all that. She just told them, see, don't bother with what he has said. Though. But whatever he says to you after now, just do it. That was enough prompting. Somebody here, all you need is a push. A push in the right direction. Yeah. But maybe people surrounding you are pushing you in the wrong direction. Or they are not even pushing you at all. In fact, they are making you comfortable in a sinking boat. There are some people like that. They will be telling you everything you want to hear, except the things you must hear. Because sometimes some people are caught up in complacency. Rise on your feet, everybody. Rise on your feet, everybody. Rise on your feet. Caught up in complacency. Just wondering what is next in the season of life. But at that critical juncture, God has a way of bringing people into your life who will give you a nudge in the right direction. I believe that's why you are here at Accelerate 2023. Encounters upon encounters that will open up your destiny and push you in the right direction. God opening up, you know, your sense of discernment to connect with the right people. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray a prayer tonight. As we move into, I mean, as I shut this down, I wanted to, to say a prayer tonight. I wanted to trust God for prophetic redirection in relationships. There's something about God redirecting your relationships. And for somebody here tonight, you need to pray over a broken destiny relationship, a broken covenant relationship that needs to be restored. Yeah. As we step into the second half of this year, it's a season of restoration, but not just of material things, but of destiny relationships that are pie water. So lift your two hands to Jesus all over this place. And I want you to declare it in the name of Jesus. Say, I receive a prophetic redirection in relationships, a restoration of 
broken destiny relationships. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Makete pradeka lekro dope kisata e greneke teke lekatopo i prene leketa kaya gabaya rapa sitekende at every center online everywhere lift your voice right now and declare in the name of Jesus a prophetic redirection in relationships restoration of broken destiny relationships of broken covenant relationships in the name of Jesus you will no longer be a waster as relationship is concerned you will no longer be a waster as far as relationship is concerned in the precious name of the Lord Jesus thank you Jesus I wish I could give you more time to pray, but my time is gone. Just one more prayer. One more prayer. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, in verse number 2, says, Paul was asking for prayer here. It says, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For not all have faith. The same Paul, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14, made a, 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 a note, a mental note of a particular human being, not an angel, not a demon. Said, and Alexander the copper smith did me much evil, much harm, but the Lord judge him for what he has done. I'm reading New Living Translation. He said, be careful of him, for he fought against everything we said. If Paul can have this experience, you are not immune from this experience. It's only the power of prayer that can take you over it. There are wicked and unreasonable men in the world. And Paul mentioned one of them in his own uh, uh, story. It was called Alexander the Coppersmith. Just in case you think another Alexander, no. The Coppersmith. That one. I don't know your own Alexander the Coppersmith. But tonight, just this last prayer, I wanted to pray. Against unreasonable and wicked men that the enemy may have put on your pathway. Let the angel of God disperse them. 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 Lift your two hands to Jesus. If this is the only prayer you pray tonight, pray it well. Let the angel of God disperse them. Paul said, pray for us that we may be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. Lift your voice tonight. Say, Father, in the second half of 2023, deliver me from wicked and unreasonable men. Somebody in London, pray this prayer. Somebody in Toronto, pray this prayer. Somebody in the Koyi, pray this prayer. Someone in Abuja, pray this prayer. Someone in Johannesburg, pray this prayer. That the Lord will deliver you from wicked and unreasonable men. Mekrado preden na lekata yange. Hey, kororobosha. Ma brade legete kayaga. Ikon tororobosha. Ma radagate legebosha. Ten more seconds. Pray that prayer. There's a mighty deliverance happening here right now. Angels are rearranging stuff. Rearranging your pathway. Somebody is changing his mind about your, your case. Makete kelembre nenga lekata. Ye korodobosha. Thank you, Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. I said in the precious name of Jesus. Wave those hands to Jesus all over this place. Thank him for a new season of unusual edge in relationships. Unusual edge in relationships. Unusual edge in relationships. Your relationships will no longer pull you down. 
They will give you wings to fly. I said they will give you wings to fly. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody bless tonight. Come and put your hands together. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah.